side of the right foot to Fox. Wallace. Now Speed. Wallace again was a bit lucky then. I think he might have been trying to play it back to Speed. But on he goes. He's made his own luck. Rodney Wallace. What an outstanding goal on an outstanding day for Leeds United. A goal really in keeping with the carnival. We've had 25 minutes. And another memory for Leeds United on the last day of the season. Rodney Wallace goes it alone and there was nothing that Norwich could do about it. Even after such a great season, United still needed at least a point to guarantee second place in the league. Brian McClare's determination showed they meant business. Tottenham's poor season was emphasised by this goal. After Giggs' cross, it was Spurs' mistakes, as much as United's doggerness that resulted in Mark Hughes' goal after 56 minutes. It was championship stuff indeed from United. Phelan put Giggs through again. The youngster's cross was met by Hughes for his second goal, United's third. But the day wouldn't have been complete without the last word from Gary Lineker in his final game in English football. 3-1 to Manchester United. Worthington finding Nielsen. He scored his first goal, a fortnight ago. Sheridan wasn't so very far over, but Hooper just about had it covered. Nielsen. Bart Williams has made a run left to right, leaving space for Hurst. Hurst in beyond Nickel, David Hurst! Good save, it really went straight at Hooper, didn't know too much about it. And it's the first chance that David Hurst has had for some time. Hit it firmly, straight at the goalkeeper. If Arsenal had started the season the way they finished it, their title defence might have been a successful one. And beaten in three months, they've been scoring freely, if not always tidily. Kevin Campbell nudging in the opener following Paul Merson's corner. But Arsenal haven't been as tidy at the back as they were last season when they won the title with such conviction. When a Mickey Adams cross was touched in by Glenn Cockerell, it was the 46th goal George Graham's side had conceded during the campaign. This was the last match to be played in front of the old North Bank Terrace before it's knocked down and rebuilt, so victory mattered to Arsenal for sentimental reasons as much as anything else. They went back in front when Merson was fouled by Francis Benali. Lee Dixon normally takes the penalties, but Ian Wright was chasing the golden boot. One goal behind Gary Lineker at the start of play, Wright stayed calm to draw level at the top of the first division scoring charts, his 27th league goal of the season. But then Lineker scored for Tottenham at Old Trafford to move on to 28, so when Alan Smith headed in with five minutes left to make victory safe for Arsenal, it was all about Wright's goal chase. Going into injury time, Arsenal's number eight still needed to score twice to overhaul Lineker. He set about the task as if the championship was still up for grabs. Wright received the ball 70 yards from goal, left Terry Herlock trailing, Richard Hall twisting and Tim Flowers flailing. Brilliant skill produced at top speed. Incredibly, there was still time for one more. The last goal scored in front of the North Bank was one of the scruffiest finishes it's ever witnessed. Not that Wright cared. The golden boot was his outright. 29 league goals make him the First Division's leading scorer. Arsenal, the First Division's leading scorers, with 81.
Coventry needed a solid start, but they didn't get it. After kicking off, they kept possession for just three seconds, and the next time a Coventry player touched the ball, it was to take it out of the net. Of all the men to put Villa ahead after 20 seconds, Cyril Regis would have been bottom of all Coventry supporters' lists. Villa's second came from the sort of attacking run that should take Tony Daly to Sweden as part of England's European Championship squad. Regis was there again for the cross, but Dwight York was fractionally ahead of him. At Meadow Lane, Luton, needing a win over Notts for a chance for a Premier League place, went ahead on 17 minutes. After Pembridge's long throw and Harford's knockdown, Julian James rifled them in front. On 34 minutes, the striking student equalised. Rob Matthews, a 21-year-old from Loughborough University, took his chance after Craig Short's effort was blocked. And Notts County bowed out of the First Division with a win. Rob Matthews made the score academic with his second in the second half, a precision lob. Notts County 2, Luton 1. Not a lot at stake in this local derby for both Oldham and Manchester City, except pride. Tony Henry grabbing the first bit of glory for Oldham. His seventh of the season, this one from close range. And what a dream for Manchester City's latest young recruit, 17-year-old Adrian Mike. Only his second game for the first team. Maybe sloppy goalkeeping, but what a superb start for Mike. And still City kept control. Leading striker Dave White getting a superb hat-trick. His first after 31 minutes. Then in the second half, he got the easiest of chances and it gave White his second strike. A mistake by defender, White tapped home with ease. Then it was young Mike Sheeran's turn to get in on the act. A streak down the wing left Oldham behind and his seventh goal of the season looked oh so easy. And a minute later, White was there again to notch up his hat-trick taking his season's tally to 21. Again, the Oldham defence all at sea, and White keeping his cool. A consolation goal at the end by Paul Molden gave Oldham some degree of respectability, but on the day, it was Peter Reid City who grabbed the derby glory. Wimbledon's old spirit has returned under Joe Kinnear's management, as witnessed first-hand here by Dave Bassett, the man who did so much to create their legend. Bassett, Sheffield United were three down by half-time at Selhurst Park, John Fashionu poking in the first after Mervyn Day's error. Day, Leeds United reserve goalkeeper, had been called in on loan at short notice by Bassett, with all his other options injured. The manager might wonder how his six-foot-two emergency signing was outjumped by a five-foot-nine Robbie Earl for number two. Earl has been a success story of a difficult season for Wimbledon, adjusting well to First Division life after stepping up a level from Port Vale last summer. United's generous marking gave him his second of the afternoon and 14th of the season as the home side finished with a comfortable win. It might have been more comfortable still. Fashionu had the chance to make it 4-0 from the penalty spot in the second half. At least Day had something positive to remember the afternoon by. Matching last season's third place finish was always going to be tough for Crystal Palace who were undoubtedly affected by the sale of Ian Wright to Arsenal and the loss of John Solarco to injury within a few days last autumn. A league double over Liverpool was a high this season but they ended on a low. An own goal by John Humphrey handed victory to QPR who nonetheless finished at one place below Palace in 11th. Both Everton and Chelsea have had the kind of season they both would like to forget. Both have set the sights on Wembley, neither of course got there. Beersley and Moncow were trying to get to the ball when they intervened. Moncow didn't like Beersley's challenge at all and patted him on the back of the head for doing so. I don't like what you did there, son, Moncow says. Referee didn't like what Moncow did. Out came the red card, early bath, penalty, the offence in the box. 
Peter Beardsley slotting home Cooley. Everton one up. Vinnie Jones in a hurry to get Chelsea back on level terms. But it was Everton who added the second. Peter Beagre making it 2-0. But Chelsea did make a fight of it. They did get one back. Eddie Newton, superb sweeping volley. Final score though, 2-1. Frank McAvenny's second spell at West Ham hasn't provided the goals or the highs of his first, but he's not lost his sense of occasion. Brought on as a half-time substitute, McAvenny stole the show. That was the kind of finishing that took the Hammers to third place six years ago. The striker was saying goodbye, having been given a free transfer. He wasn't going quietly, definitely onside to tap in his second, despite the protests of Forest goalkeeper Mark Crossley. Going into the match, McAvenny had scored only three league goals all season. He doubled that tally in half an hour to take home the match ball as his leaving present. West Ham have taken points off nine of the First Division's final top 11, yet have still finished bottom 